taking a look at my earth rotations okay uh, good afternoon everyone i'm shatakshi dhungde i'm an associate professor of economics um, at the ivan allen college and um, i'm glad to be here and talk a bit about my research so the focus is a bit different from my predecessors talks um, i did my PhD in economics at University of California in Riverside, and I'm also a research affiliate at the National Poverty Research Center, which is at University of Wisconsin-Madison. One of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, goal number one out of the 17 goals, is no poverty, and my research is closely related to that particular goal. Um, specifically, the goal is saying by the 2030, all countries should reduce the levels of poverty by at least half when poverty is measured in all its dimensions. And that last part is where my research is focused on, when poverty is measured in all its dimensions. Traditionally, poverty has always been looked at as income shortfall. You look at the World Bank's uh, work on poverty, they define poverty as individuals who cannot earn maybe $1 a day or $2 a day. If you look into US, you will see that if you belong to a family of two adults and have incomes less than, say, $16,000, you're going to be in poverty. If you are a family of four ad adults or two adults and two kids, and you have income of less than $25,000, you're going to be considered as poor. And this is a very arbitrary notion of calculating how many poor we have in the society. There is an increasing focus in the realm of economics and partly also in the realm of philosophy that poverty or quality of life can be measured something beyond income. Income is only one indicator of our quality of life. Our well-being can be measured with much better data by looking at other facets of life. And that is precisely what I'm doing in my research. I'm working with the US Census and their data. And for the last 10 years, we have now calculated what we call as multidimensional poverty index for the US. We have looked at individuals and households, and we have looked at indicators such as education. We have looked at health indicators. We have looked at housing indicators, environmental factors, as well as transportation. So if an individual is not high school graduated, if he or she is unemployed, we are considering them as multidimensionally poor. If they do not have health insurance and they are living in a county with high emissions levels, we are considering them multidimensionally poor. So there are different ways in which you can count them. In the environmental factors, we are looking at air quality in the county, we are looking at water violations in the county, and we are seeing increasingly large number of deprived living in these counties where there is a low food security index, where there is a high air pollution index. That's sort of the larger picture of the type of work I do. There is also a local component to the research that I do, and I work with GDOT, or the Georgia Department of Transportation, where we are looking at sustainable ways of transportation, and mainly what is the economic impact of these methods. So we are considering or writing a report, which is the first ever at the state of Georgia, which is looking at the economic impact of bicycling infrastructure in the state. All of us here need not be convinced that bicycling is most alternatively sustainable, environmentally friendly modes of transportation. But we are making a statement saying that there is also an economic benefit to the local economy when we invest dollars in bicycling. So if you want to learn more about that, feel free to contact me. Two keywords, anytime you're thinking of sustainable development and of measuring poverty or well-being, feel free to contact me. Thanks.